Module 3. Describe any two stages of the program translation process. Let's go with um lexical analysis. That's a lot of lines, boy. How much you really wanted to write? They have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 lines, boy? Anyhow. I like good lexical analysis. Um the characters are read from left to right. Something like that, yeah. Characters are read from left to right. Um, I don't know what else. Like, white spaces are removed. White spaces are removed, and um, I don't know. It's breaking down into tokens. It's broken down into tokens. I mean, it's four marks. Like, I basically gave you lexical analysis and told you clearly, okay. Syntax analysis. Syntax analysis would be the, um, the, the, what is what the code is checked for conformity to the programming language rules and um grammar yeah essentially something like that um that's what syntax analysis was to do i mean after that you have semantic analysis which will you know check flow of control check to see if you have the correct if statements and you have intermediate code generation i'll just write them down with only extra spaces because i don't know you could do that semantic as the next one after semantic is um intermediate code generation and then you have um code generation which is kind of like the um Yeah, then that's when you get to the binary of it and um yeah code optimization code generation and then you bring the link and the load anyhow four marks i don't know what to say so chances are it's late in the night and you're watching this past paper video hoping that you get the answers to the past paper that you've been looking for for all this time and you're happy that it actually exists on youtube well don't leave it up to the youtube algorithm to show you the rest of um, answers i have an app that's called learn it by make it simple tt and it has all the past paper answers in chronological order for the past 10 years maybe 12 depending on the time that you're watching this video it might have a lot more the app is called learn it go find it download it link will be in the description and if you want to see the pdf with the actual crap of foot handwriting that i have with the answers so you could actually scroll to the pdf and look at the answers as it was written instead of watching the video hey you could do that too download the app now all right back to the answers all right explain two ways in which good programming style can be trying to maintain when writing code okay white space can be used to show a distinction between control structures in the code making it easier to follow and indentation can easily show which lines of code are governed by which yeah yeah white space indentation and uh what's the next one man comments yeah comments comments can explain parts 
of the code to future programmers who have to maintain it. Cool. Part C, the formula for finding the volume of a rectangular base pyramid is given below. Ooh, they're trying to get people upset by it. They're like, oh my goodness, let's bring some maths into it. Let's phase them. Write a C function pyramid volume that accepts three parameters. Base length, base width, and base height. Then calculates and returns the volume of a rectangular base pyramid. Wow. This is insulting. This is insulting. I now understand why the children say that the paper was easy. I am... Um, I am perturbed. What kind of... Here's what you ask people to do, boy. Wow. Alright, so it returns a value. So if it returns in a value, do now set a multiplication. You multiply by a fraction and all kind of things. So it will be a float function. Pyramid volume. Float pyramid volume, it's accepting a, um, I'll put everything as a float because it could be a decimal. So float L, float W, and float H. You know, I shouldn't be, I shouldn't be mad because the exam come easy and people, you know, churners always ask for an easy, easy paper and thing and whatnot. So I'm glad I'll get an easy paper. I'm glad. Because it has some years that it brings some real difficult stuff. So I'm, I'm, I'm happy for y'all. I'm happy for y'all. But oh gosh. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah, the reason I put floats is because it's a shape. You could get three point something. You could get two point something. You could get five point something. You, could, you, you should be able to cater for decimals because you're finding the volume or something. Right? And because you're finding volume or something, I, I declare it as a float because it should return a float value. Um, yeah. So, there you go. Uh, yeah. So we read it, read this stuff, and then what we want to do, we want to find the volume. All right, so the volume is here. So we are to create, find the area of the base. So we will declare a float, float a b. I'll call it, and then we're going to say a b set it to zero. A b is equal to l by w, and then I will also declare a float called v, set it at zero, and then v is equal to One third, one, one divided by three. I don't know, this really just testing to see how careful you are or something by AB by H, and then you return B. That's all. Look at lines. Look at. <laughs> oh, yeah. I know. I know. Check in to see. Okay, let me scroll down to the next part. Look at lines to write our function now, boy. Wow. Like, if you really, if you don't know what you're doing and you don't know how to write a function, you might think you have to write a whole program, you know. Wow. Calculator returns the volume of a rectangle of base pyramid such as the one shown in the diagram. Like I don't even need to know what's going on with the diagram. I just get the things. Wow. Yeah, if you use int for everything, you'll lose one mark. Yeah. I would, I would think that would, if you if you use um if you use int here instead of float, then you'll probably lose that one mark. Um I just saying 
I really just saying. Anyhow, seven marks, take that and run with it. I could see them giving a seven marks for this, but that's the easiest seven marks I that I seen in a long time. Long, long time. But we know Bex. Alright, differentiate between declarative and imperative programming paradigms. Okay, declarative. Yeah, students said they had problems with this. Um Declarative is based on facts and rules, rules to determine the output. Um, imperative. is based on step-by-step -step calculations step-by-step -step instructions that are a one-size-fits-all yeah um instructions imperative is based on step-by-step -step instructions that um, can be reused to solve the same problem. Right. Yeah, programming paradigms. Um, programming paradigms doesn't really work out too well for students. A lot of students still study um, programming paradigms. But that's okay. Alright, a vendor uses a C application to store data about the vegetables that he sells. Each vegetable has an ID, integer, uh, cost price, um, floating point, that's all right. Okay, write a C declaration for a struct veggie. Okay, so struct veggie rec. And we have a uh, int id uh float cp uh float sp and uh int q quantity in stock close that off semicolon call on two marks for that structure Declare two variables, carrot and peas, and have their record structure declared. Okay. Struct veggie. Sorry. Is B E G R E C. Struct veg rec carrot, comma, peas. That's all. Two structures. You could even declare it straight in the, in the code I have right here, but that's all right. We'll take that. Write C code to input data into the carrot structs. You can use any value for ID cost. Oh, go on, man. This is so, this is so rough. Like this, so rough. Oh. All right. So I'm going to put carrots. That ID is equal to something. Carrot dot cp is equal to something carrot dot sp is equal to something carrot dot q is equal to something so carrot id is one selling price is 20.10 no cost price is 110 selling price is 25.15 and q is two i don't know yeah all they're doing is um Assign enough value to our structure. So, carrot dot id carrot dot cost price carrot dot selling price carrot dot okay, good. Assume that the two bedrock structs tomato and beans are already loaded with data. This is I repeat. They, they, they ask us question already. They ask us all the time. Yeah. Um. So they just want you to. You can use any value you want. So all they're doing is inputting data. 
if they wanted it to get from my wanted to get from a user they would have said input data from a user or receive data from a user all right so we have tomato and beans already loaded the data right so you could exchange the cost price values of tomato and beans all right so we had a creator int um temp the cost price no we had this float sorry float temp and you're going to say um tomato dot cp temp is equal to tomato dot cp then you're going to say tomato dot cp is equal to beans dot cp and then you're going to say beans dot cp is equal to temp that's a standard swap there. That is a standard swap there. Alright, another reason why they, we can't you know, like get this from a, a user because it said you can use any value. So that means you could just put in whatever value you want. This swap here, all you have to do is declare the temp and then swap them in and put them back inside the beans and you're good all right c last one for five marks all right write a c function total which accepts a 10 value integer array as a parameter number 10 and returns the count of all the numbers in the array that are less than 20. finally a question that is you know that requires some work all right so int total and this is not even that much work. All you're receiving is the array int number. And you just receive that. And then you're going to say find a count of all the numbers in the array that are less than 20. So you declare a counter in C is equal to 0. Or C is equal to 0. C less than 10. C plus plus. Does he want to show you some lines for? If um, numbers C is what? What do you want? All the numbers that are less than twenty. Count of all the numbers. If numbers C is less than twenty. Um, count plus plus. So you have the count and you have the count is equal to zero. If, count is zero. if number C is less than 20, carry up the count by one. And then um, you end with four and then you return count. That's all there, you know. How do you get five marks for this? And the other one with the, with the basic maths, the most basics of basic maths, they get seven marks for this. So they gave you seven marks for this where you didn't have to do any loop everything you're doing is sequential there is literally no logic that is taking place all you have to do is know the correct data type i guess they're probably checking to make sure you know how to use the correct data types to use floats and them kind of thing but for this one here we actually have to do like a loop and a if and whatnot and you have logic is five marks but anyhow that's your five marks here you, you get the array pass to the um to the function it comes in as number you take that number calculate the total calc you take out the array inside you create two counters one to count for the for loop and the next one to count every time you get a number less than 20 if numbers location c is less than 20 carry up the count by one this for loop will run itself out and then return the count because you want to return the count of the numbers in the array that are less than 20. yeah that's it for, um, for this paper how long it took me to do it one hour and five minutes for a two and a half hour exam.